Ambassador Sales, thank you very much for talking to Vice of America. You are the coordinator of the Bureau for Counterterrorism and uh, uh, Countering Violent Extremism here at the State Department. Uh, mm, your office efforts in 2017 have been especially on Hezbollah. How uh, dangerous is Hezbollah for the U.S. and its citizens? Well, we're very concerned about um, an increasingly assertive and increasingly capable Hezbollah playing a malign role not only in the Middle East, but globally as well. Um, we're, we're seeing uh, Hezbollah fighters help to prop up the brutal Assad dictatorship in Syria. Uh, we're seeing Hezbollah fighters also intervene in Yemen, uh, in the Yemeni uh, uh, conflict. And we're also seeing Hezbollah uh, operatives around the world um, storing weapons caches for use in potential future terrorist activity. Um, so we're, we're very concerned about this, and that's why the United States, uh, under the leadership of President Trump, uh, has made countering Hezbollah's malign activity around the world a top priority. Last year, we announced two new rewards for justice uh, for two senior Hezbollah leaders. Um, these were the first awards that we announced under this program in a decade, and I think that speaks to the resolve that the United States has to counter the very dangerous threat emanating from this group. How does its bullah compare in terms of a threat for the U.S. with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and uh, why is, uh, is it a priority for the U.S., and why? It, it is a priority, and it's a priority of the incoming, the new Trump administration. Um, in the past, we focused very heavily on the threat posed by Sunni terrorism, Al-Qaeda, for instance, ISIS, for instance, and its various regional affiliates. Um, and we're still focused very much on those threats. Um, we're very happy with the results that the Defeat ISIS coalition has managed to achieve in the conflict zone of Syria and Iraq, rolling back the false caliphate. But alongside that effort uh, to counter ISIS and to counter Al Qaeda, it's important to keep in mind the full range of terrorist threats that the United States faces and that our allies face. Uh, and that's why we are broadening our focus to include Hezbollah as a key threat that demands the attention of the international community. There's been a lot of um, talking about terrorism and places where there is a lack of political freedom and civil liberties. An organization here in Washington, Freedom House, released a report about how free countries around the world are and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are performing more poorly than Iran. Um, I wonder, as these two countries are partners of the U.S. and there is a dialogue about counterterrorism uh, ongoing with these countries, is this a matter of discussion with these countries? Well, there's no question that governments that are open and transparent and that respect basic human rights um, and that include mechanisms for the resolution of disputes, those sorts of governments are much more resilient uh, to the threat of terrorism and much less likely to produce uh, terroristic problems um, than governments that uh, fail to respect those basic fundamental requirements. Um, the Iranian regime is one that fails to respect the basic needs uh, and rights of its citizens. Um, and the United States has no quarrel with the people of Iran. The United States sees itself um, as a partner of the people of Iran uh, in their long-running struggle to achieve greater human rights, greater respect for human dignity, uh, greater economic opportunity. And one of the frustrations, uh, if you will, um, with the Iranian regime is its consistent decision to prioritize terrorism over the needs of the Iranian people. The Iranian regime spends hundreds of millions of dollars to support terrorism around the world, to prop up dictatorships in Syria, uh, to prop up uh, forces fighting in Yemen. You know, those are resources, that's money that belongs to the Iranian people, um, and it should be used for the benefit of the Iranian people. Ambassador, what are the tools at your disposal in this uh, counterterrorism office to counter the threat of Iran and the IRGC in the region, in the Middle East? One of the things that's really important is cutting off the flow of money 
to terrorist organizations. Uh, we don't just want to stop the person who blows up a bomb or who buys the bomb. We want to stop the people who are contributing the money that enables the purchase of the bomb and its use in an operation. And that's why we've made aggressive use under the Trump administration of our sanctions authorities and our designations authorities. Um, the Treasury Department recently designated the Revolutionary Guard Corps for providing support to terrorism. Um, and that's just one part of a broader strategy to use financial instruments, to use our designations tools uh, to roll back the funding that is the lifeblood of terrorism. In the latest uh, sanctions imposed just a few days ago on the RGC, uh, there are three, four different organizations linked to the RGC uh, working on s the cyber sphere. And there are several other companies working on helicopter spare parts and, uh, and aircraft spare parts. Uh, why, uh, what's the meaning of targeting these organizations linked to the RRGC? Well, we, we have to be mindful of the various different aspects of the economy into which terrorist organizations uh, attach their tentacles. Um, they sometimes work through front companies. They sometimes work through seeming charities uh, to raise money from unknowing uh, contributors. Um, and so it's important that we use the tools, the financial tools available to us, not just to target the terrorist organizations themselves, but also to target partners of those terrorist organizations that are sometimes in cahoots uh, with the fundraising of those organizations. You've worked to um, implement a tracking system to track broken travel, so to prevent terrorists to travel to other countries, and we are talking about the U.S. Can you explain a little bit what is that about and how does it make the U.S. safer? Yes, well, what we're talking about here is PNR, or, or passenger name record data. This is the sort of information that you give to an airline when you book a flight from say, London Heathrow to, to JFK Airport in New York. Um, the information that is provided by airlines to the United States government is a really valuable resource for identifying terrorist threats. You can run the data against watch lists of known or suspected terrorists. You can do link analysis. Has anybody used the same frequent flyer number as a known terrorist? Is there some sort of connection that we're not aware of between those people? Um, and you can also use the data to identify uh, efforts by terrorists to evade detection, so-called broken travel. So if you want to come to the United States to carry out a terrorist attack, you might not book a flight directly from London. Right? You might book a flight from London to Albania, to Indonesia, to Tokyo, to South Africa, and then on to the United States, sort of masking your trail uh, through that convoluted, circuitous route. Well, if we're able to collect passenger name record data, it's much easier for us to spot those sorts of efforts to evade detection. Now, the U.S. has been using this kind of data for decades um, to spot terrorist travel. Recently, the United Nations Security Council adopted a new resolution requiring other UN members to live up to the same standard that the U.S. has pioneered. And so in Security Council Resolution 2396, which was adopted last December, um, one of the requirements in that resolution is for other countries to develop their own systems for collecting this kind of information and using it to spot terrorist travel. I wonder, is this tracking system and database exchange uh, with other countries um, safe and good enough to basically make other uh, travel restrictions like the one on seven countries, including Iran, uh, useless, basically. So there are a suite of tools that all work together and complement one another. Um, the point here is to build a layered set of security measures that complement one another. Um, no one system, no one initiative by itself answers all of our needs. And so it's important to complement this PNR system with other kinds of measures, um, such as the collection of fingerprints uh, at the border for non-US citizens who are entering the country, such as the exchange of information about known and suspected terrorists with other countries who are our close partners and allies. Um, and there's you know, countless other counterterrorism programs um, that achieve and seek to, promote, uh, uh, seek to promote and achieve greater aviation security. Ambassador, thank you very much for talking to us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for your time.